Good day and welcome to another Inventor Tips and Tricks tutorial. Quite right. Right, this one's for beginners and I mean beginners. This is like beginners as in the guys that have just installed Inventor and they're clicking buttons, not knowing what anything does. They've just installed it and they're like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I can press button. Oh, what does that do? Oh, look, I'm doing some... Those guys. Yeah, and it's for, it's for the absolute majorly beginners. If you're an experienced and seasoned Inventor user, move along now. Toodles. Goodbye. Not for you. This is not for you at all. This is for the absolute beginners. The whole point of this video is to try and give you an idea. It's, it's just to sort of guide you in a direction of understanding how something's modeled. It's not going to teach this video itself. It's going to be quick, but it's, and it's not going to teach you how to use Inventor. Can't do that in a single couple of minutes worth of video. But it's, it's a little tip to show you how to understand theory behind how people approach models and designs. It's something I used when I was first learning Inventor as well. Uh, it's a little trick that I sort of stumbled across many, many years ago, and it just helped me understand how people did stuff, rightly or wrongly, but it helped me understand how people got a job done. And I remember what that was like, and I thought, I'll just do a video on it myself. So you might be looking at this model here, and you might have looked at other models, other sample files, things in your drawn office, and you've opened them up, and you've been like, how the fucking hell did someone do that? How did they do? I can't even draw a box. I can't even make. A, I can't even make a single circle. Uh, and how? And look at this. This is ridiculous. How do? How do? You, I'm never going to get to this point. I'm never going to get too much pressure. Ah. You know, you might be at that point. It's not that bad. So the trick is, on the left hand side here in your part. This is just uh, part specific, not assemblies. Just parts. You've got a model tree. This model tree consists of all the features that make this. So every single cut hole sort of extrusion, you know, pattern, mirror, everything that accumulated to build this is listed here and it's all in a timeline. This is a timeline. This hole can't exist without all of these. That extrusion can't exist without these. So, you know, it's it, it's a timeline. It's a hierarchical... <laughs> that word. But towards the very bottom, you've got this little doodah here, this little red cross. It's in every part, without exception. It's uh, called the end of part. It signifies the end of the part. It's the end of all the features. It's where all the features stop, and it signifies that. Now, what you can do is grab a hold of this with the left mouse button and pull it up, right? Uh, you can stop it. You can let go of the mouse anywhere. But what I recommend that you do, if you're learning and want to understand how something was done, just hold the left mouse button, drag it all the way at the top. Don't let go when you see the no entry sign. Move it down just past the last feature, or the first feature as the case may be, which will normally be something one, extrusion one, revolve one, that sort of thing. Let go and everything will vanish. But that's because we've told Inventor that the end of the part is now before all the features. So it suppresses all the features. What you then do is hold the left mouse button down again on the end of part and then just pull it past the very first extrusion. So we've essentially stepped back in time to the very first feature that the guy or the girl did when they were modeling this part. They started with this extrusion. Then what you can do is go, okay, how do, well, mm, right, fair enough. So they started with that. How did they do that? Well, then you can expand extrusion one. And then, oh, okay, they started out with a sketch, which is actually fucking shockingly bad practice because that should be symmetrical around that point. But whatever. And then what do they do? Okay, well, they made a couple of work planes and then they did that. Interesting. How do they do that? How do they get the circle to go that way? Uh, Okay, they did a sketch there. Ah, oh, so they drew a circle there. How do they get the circle there? Ah, that's what that work plane was for. So that work plane there is where the sketch starts. I see. Okay, and then you go, what did he do next? Oh, he did that. How did he do that? How did he do that? He sketched that in the middle of there. And then he must, if we edit this extrusion, just double click that. He extruded up by... So that's what I'm getting at. You can, you can interrogate how somebody did something in a timeline-based fashion, just slowly stepping down through the modeling process, and then you can slowly start to see how different people approach different designs, especially things as complicated as this. So that's my tip. It just lets you understand theory. It lets you understand how to approach models, where to start. 
you see a certain feature in a model, you go, that looks quite tricky, I wonder how we did that. We'll just step back through time, move the end of part either before or after that feature that you want to know about, and then just have a look at what it was made up of, what the model was like when he started that feature, and it's a really, really good way to understand uh, the concepts behind 3D modeling in Autodesk in Wentar. And that's pretty much it. That's it. Uh, Sounds like, I mean, if, you're a, if you are that seasoned inventor user, what are you still doing here, man? I told you to naff off. I told you it's not for you. It's not for you. I'm sure you would have got, you would have known this, wouldn't you? I'm sure you would have. Uh, but if you're a beginner and this was useful, do please press like on the video. Hopefully somebody found it helpful. If not, I've just completely wasted my time, but I don't, I don't care. I don't care. That's, uh, I've got no better to do. Well, it's sunny as balls outside, actually. It's, it's like 20 degrees and I'm inside with a headset on talking to myself in front of a screen. In fact, two screens. Because, uh, Hello, I'm a nerd. That's what I do. Uh, oh yeah, I need to get out more. Thank you. Like, comment, subscribe, etc. Bye.